Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are returning to the Scarlet and Violet speculation, but we're not going to talk about anything specific to what we saw in the trailer. Today, I want to comment on a growing trend over the last couple years with Pokemon, and it is the watering down of their evil teams. I think Scarlet and Violet needs to rebound from this and present a vitally large threat from their evil team. Not two different team, one good, one bad, one legitimately nefarious team that you have to stop. Let's jump right into things. The evil team of a Pokemon game is a tradition as old as the franchise itself. Starting with Team Rocket in Pokemon Red and Blue, you, the trainer character, not only have to complete your journey to master and defeat the Pokemon League and train a team that can defeat every single gym and every single fellow trainer in the land, but you also have to go about stopping a group of individuals that are hell-bent on creating chaos in the region that you're operating in or the world world at large. These are the evil teams of Pokemon. Over the last couple years though, the scope and breadth of what these evil teams do has been, let's just say, it's been a little condensed. It hasn't exactly been as wide ranging in scope as it used to be, and the prime example of this is Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now it needs to be said that there was an evil organization that was hell bent on domination and changing the world fundamentally as we know it. That was Chairman Rose and his organization that oversaw the Pokemon League and energy throughout the Galar region. They were not a ever, ever present threat on your journey. They did not really harm you, the player character, until the end of the narrative. And when you battled them, they didn't even have their own evil team battle theme. It was a couple grunts that worked for the organization and then eventually Chairman, Lo Chairman Rose and Olena. These were your antagonists through Sword and Shield. The evil team, quote unquote, throughout your journey was Team Yell. Team Yell had grunts, they had a head, they had Marnie, who was sort of part of Team Yell, but really wasn't because of the way Team Yell was constructed. It was essentially a Marnie fan club cheering her on as she went about her Pokemon League challenge in the Galar region. You had to fight them occasionally when you got in their way or when you were hanging out with Marnie. They were a goofy, silly, evil team with some interesting designs and an interesting battle theme, but other than that, they were not a threat to you as a player. That was Chairman Rose and his organization. You can go back another generation as well and take a look at Team Skull. Team Skull were uh, people who were just kind of causing trouble on the Alolan Islands. Your real threat was the Aether Foundation with Lusamine and her goals of bringing forth the Ultra Beasts. That was really your challenge. And the Aether Foundation is a better execution of a more lackadaisical evil team and a more diabolical one, both in the same game. It is what Sword and Shield attempted to replicate and ultimately failed on. In the next generation, in Scarlet and Violet, we need to return to that singular threat, the team that you are fighting throughout your journey that you will ultimately culminate in a big final battle with that will involve the legendaries and all of the main players of the region. I think we need to get back to that with Scarlet and Violet. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. And take a look at the join tab, see if some of the perks interest you. And if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me, that is also greatly appreciated. Now, let me clarify something, and it goes to what I was mentioning before the, uh, the ad break there just now. They executed this idea of two different organizations at work in the region much better in Pokemon uh, sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. The, uh, the Team Skull and the Aether Foundation clashed in ways that was really appealing, and in the original Sun and Moon, they did a really good job of, you know, you disliked Team Skull, and you thought they were annoying, and you thought that they just got in your way, but you really liked a lot of the main players in the team. The Admins and Guzma are all very likable Pokemon characters, and they did it really well. In the Aether Foundation, you could tell from the very beginning just how they're dressed, the different 
people that are part of it, the story beats that they tease to us in the buildup, you could tell that there is probably something bigger going on there. They just handled the whole thing a lot better. Team Yell and Rose and all of that was a big, it kind of just, it fell on its face. And that's part of the reason I want them to return to the tried and true formula. Now, that's not saying that their last attempt was particularly good. I'm going to come back to Legends Arceus because I think they do a good job with it there. But Generation 6's Team Flare was just really shallow. There wasn't a lot going on. Lysander's motivations and everything that was driving him to accomplish his goals was interesting. And if they had had a third game, or maybe if they had had more time to flesh it out within the story of X and Y, there could have been a lot more there. But Team Flare, the word to describe them is shallow. There just wasn't a ton going on there. And there wasn't a ton to inspire you that the next time they would attempt a team with this kind of magnitude, he wanted to nuke the world, let's be very clear here, could be handled well. And it's interesting because they're coming off of Generation 5, wherein they had one of the strongest evil teams they've ever put onto a game. Team Flare, not Team Flare, Team Plasma was excellent. The motivations were excellent. The Getsis' hidden agenda and how he used N to gain what he wanted was excellent. Having N be the king of Team Plasma and have his motivations be genuine, have his motivations come from a place of a Genuine care for the Pokemon of the world was excellent. Generation 4 nails it with Team Galactic as well. Cyrus is crazy, and his admins and his commanders are just as blinded by his goals and his motivations as he is. They look up to him. They worship him. And the grunts, you can assume, also feel this way. These evil teams are done really well. I would go through a timeline, but... We don't have all day here. Needless to say, they can land the single solo evil team. And I think it's what they should do for Scarlet and Violet. I would love to bring it back to one team, but also bring down the scope. Now, we just mentioned a bunch of examples of how the scope was huge. Generation 4, he wanted to create a whole new universe. Generation 5, Getsis wanted complete and total world domination and was using an innocent person to do it and using innocent Pokemon to do it. I think they should return to the one evil team formula and they should make it more of a team rocket scope. Bring it to a regional threat. Something that is de that we're dealing with in this Spanish-based Pokemon region. Something that impacts the legendaries, impacts the people living in the community. Maybe impacts the schools that are rumored to be involved in the plot. We've seen a couple things from the trailers that show the characters wearing different outfits and the way they're designed has led some people to speculate that we might have two schools that are opposing one another. Maybe there is a force outside of these two schools that is pitting them against each other. Something that is, you know, more localized. Something that isn't super grand because they've done extra dimensions now and all of these things. I think we need a more Team Rocket approach. We need something that is smaller in scope. Now, if you want to include Legends Arceus, they handled the solo evil villain really well in Legends Arceus. Volo only reveals himself to be the main antagonist of the game at the very end, ripping Giratina into this world to try to get to Arceus. It's handled really well, even though it is large in scope. So Game Freak has the ability to write good villains in them, even though over the last couple generations, there have been a few missteps. And I think in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, this is what we need to return to. They've done the dual teams for a while now, and I think it's time they put that to the side and focus on one. One antagonist that you are dealing with as the player character with the rest of the members and the cast of the region that will be introduced to, most likely pretty soon, going up against them and trying to defeat them. So what do you guys think? Have you liked Game Freak's approach to antagonists over the last couple generations? Or do you agree with me that they should get back to a solo antagonist, an evil, one evil team that you are dealing with and trying to fight? I think it would be a fun kind of throwback to what more classic Pokemon was. Let me know down in the comments section below what you guys think. And if you're not subscribed to the channel already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Take a look at the join tab, see if there's anything that interests you. And I've been Linky. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.